Hey everybody, welcome back to Bicious RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd Herd, or just plain welcome if it's your first time with us. Behind us here is the 24RL XL, and it's one RV with two names, either Salem or Wildwood. Two names, exact same thing. And what are we looking at? This is a fantastic, I think, half-ton towable couples camper. Um, there may be some very light-duty half-tons that can't handle this, but generally speaking, if you've got a tow package half-ton, especially anything light model, you're going to be good here. Uh, it, it's about, what, 75, 7,700 pounds total max weight with max car. Cargo. And this thing has like over 2,000 pounds of available cargo carry capacity. That is awesome sauce right there. That is a good base for a nice goulash, baby. Uh, up front, we've got a private bedroom with a very interesting bed size. You, you might like that, you might dislike it, but it's also very easy to change into something that's very standardized if you don't like it. So there's not a whole lot of downside to it. Uh, even some really cool creative storage solutions, really not just in the bedroom, but all the way through the whole camper. Underbellies enclosed with their sectionalized accessibility. Uh, you can even get a new uh, optional fiberglass skin package on one of these. Uh, there's also available 200 watt solar package that that was based on your input a lot of the feedback that you folks leave on these videos has literally shaped what we're looking at here the decor is generally light and bright you may not love that but that's what she is <laughs> and they are a fully carpetless model with no floor vents so it is something that's very pet friendly and easy cleaning it's great for a solo run around it could be a fantastic couples camper certainly uh, under 30 feet should fit into state and national parks very well um, you've got a sleeper sofa and a U-Dynet that can both sleep, uh, fold down for guest sleeping, so it's a pretty flexible model. It's got some good features. It's got a couple hitches in its giddy-up. We're going to hit both on the way and try to be fair with you. And if you like that approach, hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like our video if you've returned. Let's get rolling, baby. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know I try to be fair. Like, if I see something, I say something. And uh, Wildwood is one of those brands that I think really brings a lot of big hitter features and value. But I think there's a, sometimes a handful of little fine fit and finish details where they are sometimes lacking. And I just want to get one of those out of the way right now that you're going to see in this video. If you notice this little trim cap that they have on both sides of their bathroom doors, what happened here is it got cut a little bit too long from the factory. And it's warm today. It was colder when this was built, I would presume, because this material has expanded. And then you get a bacon effect now it can be rectified we can add a couple extra screws and get that put back in place and it won't do that for the rest of its life but you might notice basically all that big plastic trim which is very susceptible to heat expansion and contraction has done that on here so you know it's just it's little things like that that are addressable that sometimes you encounter with this brand and if that spooks you i get it i'd rather just get it right out of the way and shoot you straight and tell you what it is and what it ain't Little cosmetic things like that, as long as they can, uh, you know, be addressed properly, they don't tend to bother me too much, but I'm not the person buying this. You are, and you need to buy according to your confidence and peace of mind, and I, I think you deserve to know the real deal of Andrew Holyfield on this sucker, so there you have it. Now, as I said, pet friendly. We are carpetless. We are ventless flooring. But you might notice how it's a little bit of a step up slide. You think, well, why did they do that? Why didn't they get away from that? If you look over here, um, I should specify carpetless flooring because someone's going to say, ha ha, I found it. I found the carpet. Well, yeah, there's a little bit of carpet right there. That is a wheel well because uh, the RV is small enough and light enough. The wheel wells actually protrude up slightly into the RV's main floor body which necessitates a tiny step up slide. And this is also one of the only times where I think a pedestal style table makes the most sense because the last thing you want is for that table to get bumped and then fall off of that step up slide and just absolutely send everything tumbling. So this is about the only time I think a pedestal style table makes the most sense to me. Up top, little white beam uh, accent lighting right there. You may notice that we do have all centralized air through the RV. This is a one air coach, 30 amp service. There is no 50 amp service or second air available on this, which is very normal in this size, class, and price point. There's nothing necessarily unusual about that. You may notice though, this RV is fantastic for window coverage, though your campsite window coverage with no window in the entry door 
is, I mean, it could be better, but it's still not terrible because if you're sitting at the dinette, you're looking straight out the kitchen window. If you're sitting at that sofa, you got a breeze window right next to you. And depending on what you're doing, if you want more airflow, you always got the screen door there available, you know, uh, to, to accomplish that. Now, they don't offer any sort of like theater seating back here. This being the more simpler series x Light variety of Wildwood, that's just not a feature you tend to find. Theater seating actually isn't something you tend to find anywhere in the Wildwood family until you get into their big Lodge Destination series. So kind of keep that in mind. They do a lot of this Versa furniture, this floor plan not really withstanding. All of our vents can be turned and opened and closed individually, which is really nice because sometimes some people like cold air blowing right on them. Some people don't, and you can always dump the majority of your cold air right here in the living room with this uh, AC dump, or you can close it off and push the air through all the ceiling vents, just kind of whatever works best for you. Now, if you notice, they've got outlets built right into the side walls. That's actually something that's kind of cool about stick and tin campers, that laminated RVs really can't do effectively as easily especially an inch and a half laminated wall because the walls aren't thick enough to properly house a household receptacle so that's one of the cool benefits of a stick and tin trailer um actually what's funny is by default they have like an r9 sidewall most laminated rvs are an r7 sidewall there's just a lot of misinformation and misunderstandings that persist out there about stick and tin versus laminated and that's why i like to put the videos out to help address all that big 12 volt compressor fridge over here actually uh wildwood's one of the the first mainstream travel trailer brands to standardize that almost everybody else who's done it since uh, they, it, it's really based on the success Wildwood found with it. Now, it doesn't come with a factory TV. I don't know exactly what size you could put up there. I'm shooting from the hip. I would estimate a 32-inch diagonal would probably be all that would fit up there. If you don't mind the TV sticking into the bedroom hallway door or bathroom hallway door a little bit, you might be able to go up to a 40 inch, but it's really gonna be one of those things you just gotta see what sort of fits, or our team could measure it for you. I just don't have a tape measure. I can't measure out every single thing in every RV the way that I would necessarily like to. Now the electric heat and fireplace is mounted up a little high so that it's not pumping air directly into the side of that uh, that U dinette base. And obviously you saw it's a mirrored finish. So, um, <laughs> you know, if you don't wear any pants, well, you're gonna have to deal with the visual that comes uh, associated with that. Now, interesting little thing they do here. I kind of like it. Um, this u dinette. sometimes people are fighting for leg room, and I'm not saying this completely eliminates that challenge, but they leave the rear bench um, open and hollow where your feet would go, which can kind of, some people like to curl, I'm one of these people, I like to curl my feet under me when I sit at something. Um, it, it's just, I don't know, it's a little more comfortable for me. It probably has to do with my chunkier body stature. It helps me lean forward more easily, but I don't know. That's, that's my life. I don't know what necessarily, uh, applies to you a little bit. So I just noticed something as I was editing this footage. If you look at the location of that converter fuse box, if you blow a fuse and that slides closed, it could be a bit of a project trying to be able to access that thing to replace a potentially blown fuse. That is a big deal factor for some folks. Other folks, it doesn't seem to bother them a little bit, but it is the kind of thing that I like to point out in my videos because again, I'm, I'm trying to help you find your second camera the first time. So sometimes little details like that make a big, big difference to folks. And I hope that you appreciate that we took the extra time to freeze everything and point those out. Something they do exceptionally well here. Take a look at this. They have these big storage totes under their seating, basically wherever they could. And notice they're using some nice blackout roller shades. That's kind of what I was saying. Wildwood's really good about some key clutch awesome features. Sometimes it's just they need a little bit of a, a staple gun to get them, uh, you know, fully back up to shape and finished up. I hate that it, I just said that, but that's true. You know, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be true. Uh, again, if you're going to have some guests between this, the sofa in the back and the dinette, you could have four people sleeping in here with everybody uh, having their own spaces other than, of course, whoever's uh, sleeping in the front bedroom. Chances are you're uh, doing the Sir Mix-a-Lot double up in there, but um, you get the idea. Now, an interesting thing. Over here in your, uh, in your main living cavity, our ceiling lights are actually attached to a dimmer switch. The little control panel on the side of the uh, upper cabinet right when you walk in the door. The bottom thing you're looking at there is actually a dimmer. The top rectangle thing, that's just a sticker telling you that if you choose to add a solar package to this, that's where the wiring comes down from the roof uh, solar prep plug. 
into the uh, uh, well into the body of the RV itself, so it tells you where to mount your charge controller. There is a factory solar option now. It's 200 watts with a 30 amp uh, controller, so keep that in mind. That uh, you know might be a thing that works for you. Now, if you notice the shower here, it's a rectangular shower, and I love it when manufacturers do this. They put that big radius bar at the top there so that it gives you elbow room. Now, the RV is only six and a half foot tall. This is an X-Lite. The full Big Brother Wildwood is six foot nine. So full Wildwoods, my head does not have to be in the skylight. But if you noticed, they mounted that skylight at the perfect position in front of that little shower wand right there where it really was not an issue. And you see how you've got a full like floor to ceiling shower surround paneling in here. Now, pardon my dirty shoes. Before a customer takes one of these home, we'd obviously go through it and uh, give it a bath, you know. Now, we've talked about this. It's a bummer that it's there. But again, trying to be real about it. Backing up a little bit, facing toward the back of the camper. Like if you woke up in the morning and headed into the bathroom, this is kind of what you would see right here. And that right hand wall, considering it's a stick built camper, for me, it's just begging for like one or two towel bars up there. Now, I prefer towel bars instead of a towel hook. I just feel like they dry out better, but they do eat up more real estate. So kind of keep that in mind a little bit. Now, uh, down here, our corner toilet. Take a look at this. That is about as fluffy friendly as it can possibly get right there. Then you've got a nice little corner pocket right there for some uh, I, I'd probably keep some extra toilet paper or something there, a couple extra rolls, the old butt napkins. And beside that, we have our first of two linen cabinets built right into the bathroom uh, of this thing. Now, this is a walkthrough bathroom. Some folks love a walkthrough bathroom because it gives you a really big bathroom without actually adding extra, uh, unnecessarily extra length into the RV, although they did make this one pretty sizable. Um... A, uh, some people dislike a walkthrough bathroom because, like, if someone's using the bathroom and you're trying to get up to the bedroom or vice versa, it can kind of leave you locked out a little bit. That's not everybody's uh, preference. Now, these right here, they look like they are absolutely massive chunks of storage. And all of the space behind those doors is storage, but it's not all here in the bathroom. If you take a look there, you can see how these are a little bit more shallow shelves than some of the other ones. Um, I think I just did that in reverse order. If that made you motion sick, I do apologize. That was not necessarily my intention there. Uh, but behind that, there's more storage in the bedroom and a bonus closet. You kind of saw a little peek of that in our little floor plan uh, in a flash. Now, both sides of the bed have the same blackout roller shades. They have the same, uh, you know, like, like breeze windows. Well, they're different shape, but they're both breeze windows. They've got household and USB plugs on both sides of the bed. And here is a very interesting thing. This they, they call it a custom king bed. It's a 66-inch wide width. Well, wide width. Is that like the time in London and England? God, I'm stupid. Um, or it is, uh, not or, and it's a 78-inch length. That is essentially what is called an Olympic queen, which is an uncommon size of mattress, but it is a traditional standardized size of mattress. The thing is, everything under that mattress is still queen sized. So if you just wanted a normal queen bed, that is something that you could do with this. Now, uh, if you notice, I left that cabinet open. And if we look down inside there, I mentioned you saw or it had household and USB outlets. If you didn't know, the, the household outlets were actually hidden kind of inside those little side cubbies. And then with a pair of easy lift gas struts, you see that under the bed, you've got actually access into the pass-through, but uh, additionally, you also have um, storage in the, uh, the the way of like those little tote dresser things. Plus there's a little laundry hamper. We'll get an interesting look at that from the other side as well. And again, behind the shower, they don't waste that space. They open it up into the bedroom. So this little camper, 29 foot long basically, doesn't have a bed slide but it has a lot of the big potential storage of a bed slide. Something else this one has, if my memory's not mistaken, is pretty good road mode access, but we'll see if I get myself trapped in here. Yeah, I might have spoken a little bit too soon. Okay, so uh, obviously I'm up in the bedroom, and I crawled my way back up here just for continuity in the video, but if you notice, it gets awful tight right here, especially where that tabletop comes right up next to the counter. Now, in case you're wondering why the tabletop's jihad, it's because I had to pop it out of place. I just quick slotted it back in place and I didn't get it squared up. So that's on me. That's not on Wildwood. 
But if we pop that tabletop out of the way, which isn't really hard, we do have a little bit of an opportunity here. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not the biggest gap I've ever walked through, but my chicken legs can do the sideways travel trailer two-step, and this is nothing more than just a cushion. So if you are careful in how you do it, you can squeeze your way past it like I've done right here. And theoretically, you could go from the main entry door to the bathroom or the bedroom or whatever. But it is going to take some doing. Now, I know that we had a super duper up close and personal look at the door right there, but that's just kind of what it takes. And again, I don't love what I just displayed, but it's real. And that is the genuine article right here. And before you go spending thousands and thousands of dollars, I think you deserve to know the a deeper, you know, look at this thing. And if you appreciate that, maybe hit that subscribe button or just at least leave us a note. Said, man, that was going to be a deal breaker, but appreciate it. Thank you for showing us that. And we got other campers that might work for you. People will sometimes ask me, you know, when you put those specs in those spec charts in your videos, like, is that the total length? Is that just the box length? What I try to use just for your reference are what I call like the worst case scenario stats. So the absolute longest tip to tail length, the total height measurement. And one thing that I really recommend you pay attention to when you're trying to pair up with a tow vehicle is the GVW or max weight as I have it listed in those spec charts. A lot of people when they're shopping RVs, they wanna compare the dry weight of the RV to your vehicle's tow rating without considering the available cargo capacity, which if you notice from that chart, this one actually has a, uh, a nice chunk of cargo available to it. So if you're not paying attention, you could overload your vehicle. Now to help kind of connect those dots, um, I walked out here, well, I lugged out here that big heavy box with that travel trailer weight distribution and anti-sway hitch in it for a couple reasons. One, just to kind of illustrate again, it doesn't take a large object to eat up a lot of weight out of your cargo capacity and to kind of show you how much cargo space you do have available under here. It's a pretty nice thing they've done. A uh, little laundry hamper over here off the bedroom. We kind of saw it from the inside, but again, when you uh, when you get home, it's nice to just be able to pop open the cargo door. And whether you get a separate laundry basket or use like that little uh, you know laundry bag, as it were, it, it's kind of handy just to have everything right there. You can just pull that stuff out. Now, if you look at that front clearance light, uh, that marker light right next to the baggage door over there, below it you see a black switch. That is for the uh, power stabilizer jacks that you can put on these as an optional item. By default, these have manual stabilizers, although they are a variety of manual stabilizer that actually has an additional strong arm stabilizer bar built into them, so they're actually very, very sturdy. Uh, but you can put power jacks on these if you want. Speaking of other things you can do, you can also put a fiberglass skin on this RV if you want. They call that their platinum package. It will add an extra X to the model number to let you know which one it is. So uh, with fiberglass, this would be 24 RL XL X. Just <laughs> simple, right? <laughs> now, good power awning space on this one. You might notice the entry door this does not have a door and if you've been watching some of my other videos you're like whoa 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 what gives um wildwood the last one that you posted it had a window in the door that's correct that was a full wildwood this is the little brother x light series and although they are strikingly similar they are not identical and Big Brother Wildwood has a window in the door. Uh, x Light Series does not. Now, they don't make this floor plan in the Big Brother Series. This is just what they do right here. So that might be a factor you want to consider there. You may want to keep that in mind. Um, the, uh, the stable steps on these, you might notice, are a two-plank step, whereas Big Brother Full Wildwood is a three-plank. The x Light Series, or Salem Cruise Light, as the Salem sister calls it, they run on a smaller, lighter chassis. That's part of the reason, if you notice here, remember how we had that miniature step-up slide? You see how the wheel well bumps into the body of the RV just a little bit right there? That's why it does not have a floor flush dinette slide. That's why it has a two-step instead of a three-step entry. That's also why they are a chunk less weight and lower dollars. All those factors kind of combine uh, in together with one another. Now, whether you're looking at Big Brother, Little Brother, doesn't matter. You've got that enclosed, uh, sectionalized accessibility. And you might be looking at that going, wait a minute, it doesn't look like the accessibility that we knew from years past, if you've watched my videos before. Um, it's still an accessibility. It's still a sectionalized paneled belly. It's just not those same uh, ABS plastic panels that they had been using. Um, 
the uh, I, I don't know why they switched over. I just know that they did. So there you go. One of the updates that I'm really happy to see on this, by the way, is that they are finally now including at least prep for one of those telescopic ladders uh, right here from the factory because the roof is and has been fully walkable, but a lot of people don't realize that. Now, it's not so much of an issue on this floor plan, but there are a lot of people who have seen those ladder mounts sometimes directly above a spare tire. It's no big deal because those telescopic ladders, they actually, uh, you know, they, they start on the ground and you shouldn't mount them pure vertically. They should actually have a little bit of tilt to them so that you should always be able to clear that spare tire. And jumping over in the corner here, kind of dodging between campers today, just to give you the, the most complete look and view of this that I can. One other thing I want to mention is if you do with, uh, go with the Platinum Fiberglass Series, the windows gain a much heavier tint that the standard series does not have. Although, no matter what, you will be looking at uh, you know these airflow windows, the same windows all the way around. The windows won't change. And, in case you noticed, the slide up here is slide awning ready. So if that's something that you're interested in, that's something that we could get slapped on here for you pretty easily. And depending on what you want to do, we could even have that rolled into your uh, RV financing if you're looking at financing an RV. That being said, the best recommendation I can give you is try to keep pieces, parts, and accessories out of your financing because by the time interest accrues on those, it'll be the most expensive slide awnings you've ever seen, man. And remember, if you don't like the look of that corrugated skin that we're looking at right here, they do have an optional fiberglass package. They call it Platinum Edition. Even though it's not platinum in color, it's just a stark white fiberglass. It actually looks, I think, really, really sleek on these things. But it adds some weight. It takes away from your cargo capacity. It adds some money. So there's there's pushes and pulls to everything. That's why I like to leave you a link in the video description. Uh, you can see what we have in stock because we may have the fiberglass skin models in stock. Uh, and again, we have them in stock in both Salem and Wildwood. And you'll find pricing available right there. Now, um... If you'd prefer just a little bit different look of things, Cherokee under their Grey Wolf family makes a strikingly similar floor plan. And once you know it, we've got video footage of that. Check that link in the video description. If you'd like to kind of do an A-B comparison, I'd be kind of curious to know, hear from you. Which one would you go with and why? And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.